page A69. This time you sing, okay? You sing. Come we then. Yeah. And let us. Yes, sir. And join in the songs with. And join in the songs with. And the surround the throne, and the surround the throne together with. Yeah. Well, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those read. Who never knew our God, but children of our heavenly King, but children of our heavenly King may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad together with to. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let's pick it up. The hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly field, before we reach the heavenly field, or walk the golden streak, or walk the golden street, real big, we'll I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Beautiful. I yawn. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fair. The worlds of you gotta push. We, yeah, I hear you. I hear you over there. The beautiful city of God. Together we're marching. The beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. This morning's scripture will be taken from Numbers. Chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. The Bible says, While Israel lived in Shittim, the people began to whore with the daughters of Moab. These invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel yoked himself to Baal, a peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Take all the chiefs of the people and hang them in the sun before the Lord, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. And Moses said to judges, to the judges of Israel, each of you, kill those of his men who have yoked themselves to Baal of Peor. And behold, one of the people of Israel came and brought a Midianite woman to his family. In the, in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the whole congregation of the people of Israel, while they were there, weeping in the entrance of the tent of meeting. While Phineas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose and left the congregation and took a spear in his hand and went after the man of Israel into the chamber and pierced both of them, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. 
Thus the plague on the people of Israel was stopped. Nevertheless, those who died by the plague were 24,000. Let us pray. Father, as we reflect upon this passage here, we've come to realize your reaction to your people when they have been influenced and start copying the ways of the world. We have learned from just a little bit of the reading how the Israelites interact with the Moabites, the Midianites, and the God Baal. May we not just look at what they have done, but look at our own lives and ask ourselves, are we copying or are we being influenced by the ways of the world? Knowing, Father, that when we are, we are angering you. We pray, Father, that the message will hit us to a point where we reflect upon it this week. Look at our lives, clean up our lives, so that we may look clean and pure in your sight. Bless the minister who has prepared his message. As he speak to us, we will hear you speak to us as well. This is the prayer we pray through your son, we pray, amen. All right, page 250, The Great Redeemer. Do you have it up there? Because this one moves pretty quick. The words move pretty quick. Are y'all ready? By the way, I haven't told you I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. I haven't told you in a while. I apologize. Now, don't make me limp down this aisle on y'all because I will love you and do you, okay? All right. 250. How I love the great Redeemer as well. You guys pick it up, all right? You ready? How I love the... Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't know how much love is there. Come on. 250. How I love the, yeah, well, who is doing, with what joy I tell the story of the love that makes men free, what till my earthly life is in day. I will sing songs above, and then beside the crystal sea, more and more my soul shall be. And praise it, Jesus and his love. Let me hear you. Here we go. And he is everything to me, too. Fellas, he is everything to me, and everything will always be, and I will never cease to raise a song of gladness in this praise, but here and in, you got to get down there, the world above, my soul shall sing a saving love, life and light, and joy you see, a precious friend who died for me. Well, he has purchased my redemption and rolled my burdens of sin away. And, and is oh, you slacking off? Will grow in dearer day by day. And that is why. Well, that is why, with joy is mine, well, that is why forevermore on the everlasting shore, sing of love divine. Well, he is everything to me, to me. He is everything to me, and everything shall always be. And I will never cease to raise a song of gladness in this praise. We're here and in the world above, my soul shall sing a saving love, life and life. And joy you see a precious friend who died for me. What glory be to him forever. What endless praises to Christ the Lamb. What he has filled my life with sun. Repeat. What he has filled my life with sunshine. What he has filled my life with sunshine. What he has made me what I am. Where all that everyone would know him. Where all that all 
would adore and know that I would trust the love of the mighty friend above and be his forevermore. Well, he is everything to me, to me. He is everything to me and everything shall always be I will never cease to raise a song of gladness in this praise here and in the world above my soul shall sing a saving love life and light and joy you see a precious friend who died for me well he is everything to me to me he is everything to me and then everything shall always be and i will never cease to raise a song of gladness in his praise we're here and in the world above my soul shall sing a saving love with life and light and joy is see a precious friend who died for me i see that he thinks that i had to sing like a more up tempo song for him to come up so I'm going to do that. Page 959, as you are, just a little talk for Jesus. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Oh, will it break my heart in love? And then wrote my name above. And then just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us. And let us tell him, well, Lord, he will hear. Yes, he will, and he will answer. Yes, he will now when we fear. And as our hearts, I know you will find a little. Well, Lord, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, y'all. Oh, well, just a little talk with your Jesus. Yo, Jesus, you know he'll make it all right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, y'all. Oh, well, just a little talk with your Jesus. He'll make it right. Make it right. Well, I may have doubts and fears. But my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is the friend who watches day and night. Oh, well, I go to him in prayer. Well, he knows my every care. And then just a little talk with Jesus. Yeah, now let us and let us tell the Lord he
Now let us have a little talk with and let us tell him. Well, Lord, he will hear. Yes, he will, and he will answer. By and by, now when you feel and ask your heart, I know you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with and let us tell him. Well, Lord, he will hear. Yes, he will. He will answer. Now when, now when you feel and ask your heart, well, I know you will find a little talk with your Jesus to make it right here, make it right. Let the church say amen. Technically, I was ready to come up, but he didn't give me a signal or a sign to come up, so I sat right there. So, Larry, that's your fault. He wanted to sing some more. That's what it was. Let the church say amen. It's truly a blessing to be able to stand before you and speak on behalf of God. It's a blessing to be able to preach the word of God. Uh, I would like to thank Brother Payne and Brother Pastor for allowing me to preach today. And um, last Sunday... Last Sunday, we got a good word. If you missed it, shame on you. Shame on you, nah. But last Sunday was also something, you know, a, a very special day. A very special day. Uh, what day was it last Sunday? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. When we uplift our mothers, put them on the pedestal that they deserve to be on, and just shower them with love. And I hope you all enjoyed your Mother's Day. I hope you really did. Um, and last week, we got a, uh, we got like a rated G type message, not in the content, not in the content uh, and, and the power behind it, but the visual aspect of it. And as you heard from the minister scripture um, today, it was uh, more rated R, I guess. Um, and, and, and it's a challenge because with us, we think that... Uh, there are different levels to, to uh, sin and things of that nature. Like, you know, we, we, we think that because I might lie, I'm better than a murderer. Or, um, yeah, maybe I, I, I just looked at this woman for a long time, but I didn't do nothing with her, so I, I'm still on a good, good level playing. But see, we have to remember that it's plenty, plenty of room at God's table. Plenty of room at God's table for anybody who wants to change and come to him and make him or allow him to be their Lord. Um, and because we're going to be preparing to go into Hebrews, Brother Payne thought it was wise, and I, I, I believe him, to, for us to go back to some of our Old Testament heroes. Um, for me, I had two that, that really stood out. Uh, and we know there's, there's a lot of Old Testament heroes. I'm quite sure that yours might be different from mine. Uh, the two I had was uh, Elijah and, and Phineas. And uh, <laughs> Sister Durham, <laughs> she know I, I love Phineas. I talk about Phineas a lot. And, and, I, I, and I hope to enlighten you about who Phineas is if you're not uh, aware of who he is. Um, please turn with me to Numbers 25. Numbers 25. Most of y'all probably already there. Um, while deliverance came with no bloodshed last week, remember Abigail talked to Nabal. Uh, did I pronounce that right, Brother Payne? Nabal. And uh, he, he, he was an idiot. He wasn't smart at all. Matter of fact, his, his name, the name Nabal means fool. But praise God that, that God blessed him with a, a wise wife, a wise wife that saved his life. But he ended up losing his heart because he, he realized how idiotic he had uh, 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 led his life at that moment. He did not allow David, one of the strongest dudes in Scripture, just to have some provision. And the sad part about it is that he had plenty of it. Nabal had a, man, he, the dude was rich, but he was selfish. 
And um, we all suffer from selfishness at times. We all do. But praise God that, that God gave him a, a, a beautiful wife. And then the, t- the text said she's a beautiful wife. She was a beautiful wife. And she saved this man at that time. She went on behalf of him and spoke to David. And, and, and they, there, wasn't gonna, they had, they, there was not any bloodshed, right? He, she saved him from that. But on today, some blood had to be shed. Some blood had to be shed. When you think about the Israelites and how often they strayed away from God, it should often make us reflect on how we often stray from God. It's easy. It's easy to put something in God's stead. And we're going to get into that as we walk through this passage. Is everybody at Numbers 25? All right, I'm going to forego reading verses 1 through 9 because Troy read it so beautifully. But I do want to pick up from verse 10 to 13, and we're going to go back and forth as we go through this lesson. Starting at verse number 10. And the Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, has turned back my wrath from the people of Israel, and that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not consume the people of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore, I say, behold, I give to him any covenant, or I give to him my covenant of peace, and it should be to him and to his descendants after him the covenant of a perpetual priesthood, because he was jealous for his God and made atonement for the people of Israel. Is that in your Bibles? This morning, I just want to speak to you from the title, It Takes One. It Takes One. Um, the purpose of this lesson is for us to consider the narrative from Numbers 25 so that we understand that our witness, that our witness directly affects the things and people around us. Our witness directly affects the things around us. See, yeah, people might know about God. They probably heard of him. They probably acknowledge him sometimes. But a lot of people don't know God. And for, the, for people to come to the knowledge of who God is, our witness has to be on point. We have to be ones who are always demonstrating God's power, God's sovereignty in our lives. So that the world who do not know him or does not know him will come to know him because he has made himself visible through his people. Now, we're not, if we're not making ourselves, uh, if we're not being the light and the salt of the earth, we're missing our call. We're missing our call. Now, look, look, at, look at what happened here. Uh, so, there is a problem with uh, the Israelites. And, and this is going to take us to our first point. Our first point is going to be sin around us. The Israelites have a problem. The women around them, the, the Israelites, the Israelite women, that's, I guess that's not enough. Because they want to go outside of who they are and go mess with some foreign women. Now, 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 they had to be fine or something. They had to look good or something because the way that these men were, were, were talked about in Scripture with them, it says that the men begin to whore with the Midianite or the Moabite women. And then it says that they began to even sacrifice to their gods. And not only did they sacrifice to their gods, they ate the sacrifices that they gave. Not only did they eat the sacrifices that they gave, Scripture says that they yoked themselves. Now, let, let's, let me slow down right there. Do you understand what yoke means? God, Christ says, come to me all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me now what does this word yoke means Christ just used it God uses it to yoke means I am 
making myself codependent with whatever I'm relying upon. Y'all see that? That means, that means I'm going to put your burdens or whatever you're going through, and I'm going to put myself and bind myself to that. The Israelites have been serving, have been saved, have been protected, have been provided for by God. They, had, they didn't have anything to worry about. Everything that they went through, God took care of. But they chose to allow the stuff around them, the women around them. And this is not a knock on women. It's okay to look at women. That's what he created them for. He created women to be help for everybody or for men. He created women to be help. But he did not create women to take us away from who he is. And that's what they did. They allowed themselves to be turned to false gods. Gods that God has already whooped. That can't even touch who God is. They have seen so many things that God, a living God, the living God has done. And they still allow the things on earth to take them away from him. Let me slow that down. Because it's applicable to us as well. See, what we fail to realize is that God's, it's lowercase g, can be erected in any form. Anything that we allow to take us away from who God is and from our servitude to God can be a God. God, lowercase g, being an idol. See, I like video games. Grown man, yeah, whatever. I'm a grown man. I love video games. And sometimes I allow my video game to take me from being in relational and, and in prayer, to be, I'm sorry, to, to take me from being relational and from being in prayer and being in servitude to my God. I put, I, this is what I do. I put, I put stuff to the side so that I can spend hours upon hours playing a game. A game that can't help me one way or the other, but to allow me to have friends on, 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 over the internet that I can't ever, that I will never see. But I'll put my time into that. Yeah, I'm beating myself up, but that's okay. Reflect on what yours is. Your job can become your God. You can put in your eight hours and then try to run away from God and put in some overtime and then try to run away from God and put in some double time so you don't have to spend some time with God because this is, this is what we say. I'm tired. Okay, maybe your job isn't your God. What about the clothes? We don't need a whole lot of clothes. What, what, what do you usually do? No, you don't. You really don't. All you need is what you need. And the more, if we put more time into those materialistic things, we are, set, we are setting ourselves up for something that could take us away. You, listen, what happens when you go get clothes? You, yeah, you, you online. You might on, be online shopping. You might go to the mall and shop. You might go wherever you want to go and shop. But what happens? You, you, we, don't, we don't go to the Word when, when we're doing that. Yeah, we might listen to it on the way, way there. But after we get, they get out the car, it's, it's far from us. We become removed because we put things in front of who God is. And the same thing the Israelites did. There are, man, we will always, always, always be burdened with things around us. There's plenty of things that can take us away from God. Plenty of things. But as children of God, we have to gird ourselves up and be ready to push those things away and become more in tune. Right? And that's going to lead us into point number two. Stand up for God. Look, look what Phineas does. Because I, I, I need to paint this picture and I want to make it real vivid so we can all see how powerful this, this one man did or what, how powerful it was for what he did to lift the curse in the end. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, verse number six. And behold, one of the people of Israel came and brought a Midianite woman to his family. In the sight of Moses and in the sight of the whole congregation. Y'all see that? Now that, that's, that's, that's ugly. But this is what's going to make it uglier. Watch this. While they were weeping in the 
entrance of the tent of meeting. Missed it. Come here, Sister Durham. Please. Come here. Uh, Brother Payne, do you mind coming to the front for me, please? And Brother English, come up here to the front for me. Please. <laughs> no, you got to be most. We ain't there yet. All right, all right, all right. You, all right. Come here, Brother Walton. No, you, you'll be finished. Come here, Brother Walton. Brother Walton going to be Moses. All right, you're going to be Moses. And y'all sit, y'all at the front. Y'all at the front. Now, I know this is a dramatization, so everybody, you are the people who are weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Let me get some weeps. There we go. There we go. All right. I'm going to make Brother English the bad guy because I know y'all, 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 I'm just mad. <laughs> Come here. We, and Sister Durham, sorry. She's like, I don't want to do this part. All right. So everybody's weeping right now. Moses, Phineas, the whole congregation in front of the tent of meeting. You take her hand and parade her in front of everybody. Yeah, any way you want to go. Just Now, this dude right here. This dude right here, this brother right here is about to do something so foul and he is disregarding where he's doing it at. See, the entrance of the tent of meeting is where God said, I will meet you there. This dude has utterly brought sin in the face of the whole congregation while they're hurting, while they're in pain. How do you know that? Because they're weeping. They're crying. See, we, this is why you got to learn how to stand up for God. Now watch this. Man of God. Moses. He's the man of God, right? Walk by them again. Just walk by them right one time. Okay, stay right there for me. Stay right there. The man of God. He didn't move. That's not to say that he didn't want to. We know Moses suffered from anger issues. We know that. Oh, man, look, man, listen. If you have anger issues, God can still use you. Moses killed somebody. That's in the Bible. If anybody has ever done that, God can still use you too. How do you know that? Because of what Finney is about to do. Walk, go ahead and walk out, uh, sit on this front pew right here. Finney, let's go get busy, man. The weight good on there? The weight good on that? Go and get it busy. All right? <laughs> so look, what happens with Phineas? What, what does Phineas do? It's, the Bible says, the Bible says, when Phineas saw it, when Phineas saw it, he grabbed the spear. I, see, in my, in, my, in my eyes, in my vision, I'm talking about as soon as they got like right past the point of where his eyes were like, kind of like, you know, they were gazing off, and, but he was, they were close enough. He going to look for the spear already. He like, oh, they tripping. Oh, they, they done lost their mind. They done lost their mind. Phineas is already, he already, he, 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 he over here stalking them. Now, see, you don't get to see, and praise God for how he, he, he uses his words. You can put that down. You, you, you guys can sit down. <laughs> he said, I'm keeping my faith. What we don't get to see, what we don't get to see, but you have to understand, because of the implications of what's going on, what's actually happening. It's vivid. That man went to go lay with that woman. While the people are weeping because of that, because of what's going on. What we learn to learn is that it's a plague. God is killing people. He is killing people because of what these leaders are doing with these women. And these dudes, these dudes, and, or this dude has the audacity to parade this foreign woman in front of the whole congregation while they're in pain and go to lay with her while they are crying at the entrance of, at the tent of meeting, at the entrance of it, begging God to leave them of this plague. These people are crying out to God Relieve us of this prayer, of this, of this plague, and this dude parades her around to go do something foul. So when Phineas sees this, 
he takes that spear while they're laying down and drives that spear through them. Boom! Why did he do it? Because he was zealous for God. He was honoring and protecting the name of God. And now let me show you another reason why he did it. Turn over here to Numbers 3. Turn to Numbers 3. I'm going to start my clock. See, it wasn't just that Phineas acted rashly. He didn't just, he didn't just you know, totally act in anger. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why he didn't just, it wasn't, it wasn't that he, it wasn't that he just tried to totally defy God and, 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 and break a Ten Commandments. No, no. He did it for a reason. And I'm going to show you the reason. Numbers 3, I'm going to start at verse number 1. These are the generations, are, are you there? Okay. These are the generations of Aaron and Moses at the time when the Lord spoke with Moses on Mount Sinai. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priest. Y'all see that? Whom he ordained to serve as what? Priest. All right? But Nadab and Abihu died <clears throat> before the Lord when they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. Okay? So Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests in the lifetime of Aaron and their father. I'm sorry, Aaron, uh, uh, in the lifetime of Aaron, their father, right? Keep, right, keep, read, keep reading with me. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, bring the tribe of Levi near and set them before Aaron, the priest. Y'all still with me? That they, may, that they may minister to him. They shall keep guard over him and over the whole congregation before the tent of what? Y'all see that? As they minister at the tabernacle. They shall guard all the furnishings of the tent of meeting and keep guard over the people of Israel as they minister at the tabernacle. And you shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are wholly given to him from among the people of Israel. Y'all still with me? And you shall appoint Aaron and his sons and they shall guard their what? Uh -uh, no, is that not in your Bibles? And they shall guard their what? Priesthood. Everybody say it. And they shall guard their what? Priesthood. Now watch this. But if any, uh-huh, if any outsider comes near, he should be what? Put to death. Phineas didn't act rashly. He was being, oh, that's right. He was being obedient. See, why we get so quiet? That's, 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 that's your amen moment. See, look, on one hand, we see, 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 I knew that, that, the, that murder would, or, or that killing of that gentleman would kind of like be a tough spot because we don't like to associate good with that, with that type of thing. But this is a different dispensation. The teaching is different. No, as Christians, we don't go murder people. Nope, that's not what we do. That's not what we do. But Paul said that the things written for old are written for our learning. And we can learn from this situation. We can learn how to be obedient no matter what the situation is. Because God justified that killing because it was commanded of him to do that. He was protecting his priesthood. He was protecting his God. He was protecting those people. He was protecting the honor of who God is. He was willing to stand up when Moses, who had anger issues, wouldn't move. Because Moses wasn't commanded to kill when people got that close. But Phineas, who was the descendant of Eleazar, his, that was his son, who was a descendant of who Aaron, who was an anointed priest, that's why he killed. Stand up for who God is. Let me make that applicable to now. If people are doing wrong things around you, if you're doing anything wrong around yourself, learn to be obedient. Yes, we're going to mess up. Yes, but you don't keep messing up. You don't just do the stuff just to do it. You learn from what God says. If God said that's the wrong thing to do, be zealous enough to stand up and say, God, you're right. I'm wrong. I will change. Be the one to stand up to people who are around you who don't know who God is and you're doing the right thing and they're not doing the right thing. You will be zealous enough to tell them. Not in a judgmental way. In a more relational way. Being 
being obedient to God is not us going to scripture and trying to badger people and beating them over the head and whooping them over the head with the whole Bible. That's not how we do it. Jesus didn't even do that. Jesus taught through relationships. But stand up for who God is. Stand up for who God is. Why? Because of number three, the salvation of the people. See, what we fail to realize is that it only took one person, one person to act, to move, to be obedient, to be zealous for God. And look what God did. This is what it's all about. It takes one for God to multiply. One means thousands. See, later on in this text, let me go back to Numbers 25. See, later on in this text, we see that, I told you, he was, it was a plague going on. Verse number 9 of, uh, of, of chapter 25, it says, Nevertheless, those who died by the plague were 24,000. It was 23,000 when the golden calf, but it's 24,000 right now when they're going to another false god. See, Phineas' zeal, or his zeal resulted in God getting glory. And because of his zeal, God said, I'm going to lift my curse. I'm going to lift my curse because you have honored me. If we honor God in our everyday living, imagine what he can do. Imagine what he can do with just little old me, little old you, old messed up me, old messed up you. Look what he can do. It resulted in a plague over the people of Israel. And I got let me digress real quick. Because in this passage, God says, God says, uh, let's go back up to uh, uh, verse 3. Verse 3. So Israel yoked himself to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Y'all see that? See, God was mad at all the people of Israel when some of the people didn't do anything. In a dying world, there are some people who genuinely may have not met up with Jesus. May not. But the real question is, what are we doing about it? Y'all see that? We have to learn that who we are on this side of life, we are representatives of people who people are going to eventually meet up with. Y'all missed that. Maybe I messed up on it. We are the visible representatives of the kingdom of God. People will eventually have to meet up with God. And if they don't know who Jesus is and they don't come to obedience, it's not God's fault. It's our fault. It's on us. It's on us. We have to take more ownership. Let me get back to this thought. He was mad at the whole people. He was mad at the whole congregation of Israel. But then this is what God says. He says, take out the leaders. Y'all see that? Here, I'll read it for you. God is mad at the whole congregation. But in verse 4, he says, and the Lord said to Moses, take all the chiefs of the people. Take all the chiefs of the people. So, and hang them on display. This is important. And this is really a call for our brothers. Because as men, we are called to be leaders in both our families and in the church. And if we're not standing up, God would take out everybody behind us because of what we're doing. As a father and as a husband of my family, if the Callaways aren't functioning the way that we should function, it's not on my wife. It's on me. God made me first. That's Adam. That's in, that's in, that's in, that is in the Garden of Eden. God made man first. 
and he talked to man. It didn't say that he came to the garden and, 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 and walked with Adam and Eve. No, he came to the call, he came to the garden and called for who? Adam. Matter of fact, when Eve was deceived by the apple, and I shouldn't even went here, but this is important. Uh, when, when Eve was deceived by the apple, he didn't go talk to Eve first. He went and talked to Adam. And as men, God is not going to talk to our wives first or, or the sisters first. He's going to come talk to us first. What are we not doing? And if we're not doing what he's called us to do, it's going to be some problems. That's what happened right here in this text. The Israelites, were, and he, God told Moses, go get the judges. And all those who have yoked themselves with the Midianite women, you better put them on display and tell them I don't play. God's not playing. When we put another God in front of God, it's an issue. It is an issue. And how does this play a role in, in, in the salvation of the people? Because if Phineas didn't stand up, if he didn't stand up and act on behalf, on the behalf of God, then we would not be here today. It just said that God's anger was kindled against all of Israel. And last time I checked, in the line of Israel is the line of Judah. And without the line of Judah, we don't get somebody. The somebody who saves us all. Oh, you're not, y'all missing it. See, Phineas is a picture of the Christ. He didn't have to stand up, but he did. Christ didn't have to go to the cross, but he did. He didn't have to take on all our sins, but he did. He didn't have to stand all that ridicule, but he did. So why weren't we willing to stand up for who God is and take all this brunt force and all these other things? And stop being so passive because Christ didn't. Christ did it. Phineas didn't. God perpetuated his line through one person. All it takes is one, and God will keep things going. The point of everything that I'm saying today is it takes one of us, one of us to affect our community, one of us to affect our family, one of us to, uh, to affect our jobs. All these places where we have daily rhythms of living, all it takes is for us to learn how to stand up, be obedient, and serve God. And stop shying away. Man, as Christians, we don't have to be passive. No, we don't fight. No, we don't fight. We don't, we don't, we don't try to murder people. No, but we do stand up. If something is wrong, it's okay to say, I, I don't agree with that. It's okay to do that. You know what might happen with that? One of two things. Either the person is going to say, why don't you? And you, could, you engage in a, a casual conversation and you guys can have a, a, a nice argument. Argument being just a, 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 a debate. And then you might sway that person. But all the while, you look like somebody else, like Christ. Or that person might get offended. And you, know, you never know what God can do with that. Because all you did was drop a seed and let God water that thing. And hopefully, through prayer and through multiple interactions with other people, they might see who God is too. But the point is, we have to learn how to stand up at moments and stop shying away from them. Salvation for the people starts with the people of God teaching people who don't know. Salvation for people starts with the people of God teaching people who don't know. Salvation for people starts with the people of God standing up for God and helping to help other people learn about who he is so they can come into the same thing that we have. But if we're not doing anything, if we're silent, that means there are multiple souls that, are, that might not get to where we are going. And that's on us. Phineas stood up. He stood up and acted on behalf of the people. God recognized that and lifted his curse because he wanted to kill everybody. So he, he killed a few. But because Phineas stood up, we're here today. We're here today, and we have to embrace that our witness directly affects our pe the people around us and the things that's going on around us. Learn how to stand up, all right? Everybody say, so what? So what? Three application points. Look at your life. Look at your life. What are the things that you put most of your time into? Question if those things are beneficial with your relationship with God. If it is, continue. If it's not, 
let's make some changes. All right? Number two, assess your daily rhythms. Assess your daily rhythms. Are you standing up for God in all areas? If not, make a conscientious, conscientious effort to change. Be the one that stands for God and watch how God uses you. Number three, just think one more for Christ. Just one. Always think one more. Too often do we try to affect many people. You don't have to affect all everybody yet. You affect one. And hopefully that one will turn into another one as you continue to go for your one. You see that? That actually splits into like, that's, multi that's multiplication. You, you get one, that person goes to affect somebody else, and while we're still working, she's working, and that's how you start multiplying. Start focusing on one person. Everybody not going to want to get it. That's just what it is, but that does not stop us from delivering that message. Just think one more for Christ. Focus on one. The lesson is yours. If you're here today and you're, you, you want to bow down and allow Christ to be your Lord and Savior, if you want to be that, say this with me. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of living God. That confession brought Christ's death, but to you, it could add eternal life. But maybe you already are a, a child of God. And you know you haven't been standing up for who he is. And you haven't been walking in his ways. You can repent. You can repent. Come forward and uh, ask the church to pray for you. We're a praying church. And we believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. And prayer works. Amen. Whatever you need to do, I encourage you to do it as we stand together and sing. 948, I am resolved. I am resolved no longer to linger, drum by the world's delight. What things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a Lord my side. Well, I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. My Jesus, greatest, highest, I am who call to thee. Well, I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. Well, he is the true one, he is the just one. He hath the words of life. Well, I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. My Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Well, I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. And he what he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. Well, I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. My Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Well, I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the path of sin. And friends may oppose me, and foes may beset me, and still will I enter in. Well, I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. My Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee, and I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. My Jesus, Oh, yes, yes, I, yes, I will come to me.
let the church say amen. amen. Again, uh, thank you, Craig, for reminding us. It just takes one. A lot amen. of times in our lives, it seems like we're all alone. But guess what? God looks at us as one, and one can have an effect. Even though everyone is standing still, one can have an effect. Thank you, Craig, for reminding us of that. And thank you, Craig, for reminding us to take courage and to do what God says as we act for Christ. Uh, may God bless him and his family continuously and his ministry. In response to the word of God, we have uh, two individuals, and I'm sure there's more, but two visible individuals. Cassandra has a request. He says, I will, uh, let's see. I will be away traveling to Cuba. Please pray for my safety uh, while abroad. Please, uh, let's remember her prayer as she goes away. Also remember my neighbor, Glenn, uh, when you, that you pray that he has not been feeling well. This is the one with cancer, correct? Yeah. He's in remission. God bless him. Uh, he does not feel well. He doesn't want visitors, and he has not replied to my text messages. Please pray for his physical pain to subside and the spirits to be lifted. Cassandra, let's all pray that you have a safe and uneventful trip in, in these days. Leela Osborne has asked for prayer. She has a prayer request. Uh, pray for my mom. She's not feeling well today. And ask me to request prayer for her with her condition and condition and illness. That seemed like no big deal to us, but it can end up with her having to make the trip to the hospital. So please keep her in prayer about this and her overall condition. Uh, let's remember also to keep Leela's mom in prayer, Cassandra and Glenn. And I'm sure there's others that are going through physical sickness at this time. Uh, and then those who are also going through the loss of loved ones, let's always be reminded that uh, we meet, need to be that one to offer the word of encouragement or to show uh, a, a compassion during this time. Uh, again, I, I just want to say personally, I thank you for praying for me and my wife. We've both been ill, and I'm still, we're still not out of it yet, but just continue to pray for us. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. And God is good. Let's pray for them at this time. One moment, one moment, I'm sorry. Can you guys please pray for my family um, and my mother as well? Um, we lost uh, a family member um, last week, uh, tragically. Uh, we're not quite sure yet. We're waiting on the autopsy to figure out what's going on. You know, he was very young, probably in his uh, early 30s. Um, he had some heart problems, but we're not quite sure if there's foul play going on. We have no idea. Uh, my mother is flying to ATL uh, next week on um, Wednesday. Um, so please pray for her and please encourage her. Pray for our family. Let's go to God in prayer. A wise, our mighty God, our Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Father, we thank you, Father, for being our God. We Father, Father, we thank you for being our hope and our deliverer, our Savior the ultimate goal which we would like to be close to for the rest of our eternal lives. Father, at this time, we ask at this time that you would continue to bless us in this life as we walk in this life. Father, we are so thankful for the blessings that you've given us. And Father, continue to shower your blessings upon us. Father, help us to realize that we need to stand up for you and that realize that we are your representatives on, earth, on this earth, that we are your ambassadors. We represent you. And, Father, the way in which we live our lives reflect how much we love you and how much we believe in you. Father, we pray that we will take this message to heart. And, Father, we pray that you will continue to bless Craig and his family with health and strength and continue to give him courageousness, courage, uh, fortitude, uh, good health, and the ability to discern your word. Father, in response to the, uh, to the, word, to the uh, sermon, Father, we ask that you continue to be with the individuals as they ask for a prayer. Cassandra, Father, she is flying to Cuba. Father, please bless her, bless the plane, bless everyone that is involved, and we pray that she has an uneventful flight to come back with us again. And Father, help her to, be, to show Jesus to the people of Cuba, that she may be a good representative of you. And also be with her friend Glenn as he is suffering from cancer. Father, we ask that you please ease his pain and ease his suffering and be with the doctors during this time. Father, we ask that you be with Leela, Father.
be with her mom as she's dealing with physical ailments, Father. Continue to uh, bless her and heal her if it be your will. And, Father, ease her pain and give that family just the strength to uphold each other. And, Father, we know the ultimate healer is Christ and Jesus and God. Father, we ask that you heal her, if it be your will, of this ailment. And just bless her and bless her life richly. Father, we ask that you be with Larry and his mom and, and this family member that has suddenly dealt with death. Father, we pray that uh, you would comfort them at this time and help, help us to be comforting. And Father, we pray and for understanding of the circumstances surrounding the death. And Father, help we pray and hope and pray that uh, the truth would come out. And Father, we just pray for that family during this time of dealing with death. And Father, we ask that you comfort their hearts and lives and be with Larry's mom as she's flying out to, to, to be supportive of the family at this time. Father, we ask and we lift up our sick to you, Father. We pray for those who, among us who are just going through suffering because of sickness and ailments. Father, we ask that you please heal them if it be your will and comfort them during this time. Father, we're thankful that we see other members of our church family here. Father, you've heard our blessings. We heard, you've heard our prayers. Father, we ask that you be with them during this time. Father, we ask that you comfort and be with those who have suffered loss. Father, uh, heal their hearts. And Father, help us to understand that as we live, we must well, walk with death. And Father, help us to understand th living through death and living through hardship. That Father, you love us and you will always be with us. Help us, Father, to always offer words of support to those who are going through hardships and learn to weep with those who weep and even rejoice with those who rejoice. Father, we ask that you continue to uh, just be with those who are going through financial situations, uh, just hardships, Father. As they go through these trials, Father, hopefully this produces character and through the patience and character that they grow closer to you. Father, we ask that you continue to be with us as a church. Father, help us to understand that we are on point for Jesus Christ and on point for you. Father, help us to stand up and be that one that stands up for yes, you. Yes. In spite of what the world says, in spite of what opinion says, yes. in spite of what others say about us, yes, we will always stand up for yes, you. Yes. We'll always stand up and hold on to your unchanging hand. Yes. Again, be with Craig and again, bless him richly yes. and again, just bless his ministry yes. and just continue Thank to watch you. over his family. Keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.